Hi guys, this is our tutorial on preferences and indifference curves. We talk about the main axioms that define our framework for sketching out indifference curves. Um, the primary axioms are completeness, which means that everything can be ranked, so you can rank things. We, we're going to talk about this in a second. Transitivity means that preferences are consistent. Uh, monotonicity is that more is always preferred to less and convexity is that averages are better than extremes. So when you combine these axioms, it gives us a framework to sketch out our uh, indifference curves the way we do, uh, which obviously is the foundation of um, consumer preferences. So the first one in detail is completeness. What completeness means is that people are able to rank bundles. So uh, you can say that you like good X1 more than good X2 right here or you like X2 more than X1, or you're indifferent. So there's no third option. There's no third possibility in this case. So you have this completeness in a way uh, in which preferences are ranked. Uh, secondly, we have transitivity here, which means that your preferences are consistent. So for instance, if you like X1 more than X2, and X2 more than X3, then it must mean that you like X1 more than X3. Like if you like an apple, more than a banana and you like a banana more than an orange then that must mean that you like apple more than an orange true so that so you can't say oh well sometimes i like orange more than an apple because that would be inconsistent right so if as long as these are your preferences you have to uh, like an apple more than an orange that's what transitivity means then we have this theorem so when we combine these we get this nice theorem which is saying if you like x1 more than x2 Right? So if, if x1 is preferred to x2, then its utility of x1 must also be higher than utility of x2. So let me say that again. If you like x1 more than x2, in, in economics, in technical language, you're essentially saying that utility of consuming x1 then must be more than utility of consuming x2. And so this is the reason we're able to write out um, your preferences as utility functions. Right? So that's our connection between these axioms and us writing out a utility function. Now, when we combine these, what it gives us is, is a well-behaved preferences. And one of the preference is the uh, monotonicity preference, monotonicity axiom, sorry. Uh, what it means is that people always prefer more to less, meaning um, between these two bundles, I will always prefer the one that has more. So if I have three apples and four bananas, if you give me more of either one of these, that's going to be preferred. So three apples and five bananas, which is here, has to be better than three apples and four bananas. So this is as I go up, it's higher. As I go to the right, it's higher, right? So this is strictly better. So anything in this direction is always going to be preferred. Also, like just put, putting simply, if I don't talk about bundles, I talk about single goods, that's easier to understand that I have some utility from consuming, let's say, six cookies, which must be greater than utility of consuming five cookies. So more cookies, happier me. So utility, higher utility, whenever you have more of something, you get more happiness. And that also means that you're not going to be satisfied. So more is always preferred to less. So you don't, you never say enough. So it's not like, you know, at some point you're saying, oh, I've had enough, so please, no more utility. No, we always get more utility, even though it's diminishing. So we're going to be less, less excited about the next good, but we're still going to be excited about it. When we combine these axioms, what we get is, so this is, I, I think we missed out on continuity, which is not taught in every course. It's a little more advanced. But the idea of divisibility and completeness along with continuity means that not only do we have discrete bundles like three apples and four bananas, but we can have any bundles, you know, like you, because if we had only discrete bundles, think about how my indifference, it wouldn't be a curve, first of all, it would be a bunch of dots like this. So I can't draw them in a line. I can only draw them in a nice line when I'm saying, oh, this is also possible. This is also possible. This is also a possibility. Meaning each fragment, each fraction of apples and bananas is possible. That lets me draw these out in a nice curve, which means that you have not only completeness, but also divisibility. And mathematically, for those of you who understand calculus, you know that if you have discrete dots, you can't take a derivative. 
So in order for us to have a derivative and to get the slope of this thing, we need a continuous function. And in order to have continuity, a continuity we need to have divisibility. So each fraction of a bundle is possible and we connect all those possibilities in an indifference curve. So in other words, combinations of apple and bananas is attainable, every possible combination, and can be ranked with preferences, not just with whole numbers. Which means we have indifference curves everywhere, and of course, we, we're also able to rank them in order of preference based on our utility. So this is u0, u1, u2. So the higher indifference curve is gonna be better, right? So we keep going northeast, and that's this, this is the direction in which our utility improves, right? Um, and on to convexity, which is our last axiom. It's so probably the hardest one to explain also. So in, in simple language, this is saying that people prefer averages over extremes, which means if I have these two bundles, x2 and x3, which are both extreme, and I'm indifferent between them, right? Like I don't care between them. But let's take an average of these two bundles, which is x1. So x1, on x1, I am going to be happier than either x2 or x3 because this has variety. So variety makes us better because people like having options. People like having like a, you know, a half and half of apples and bananas versus having a lot of bananas or a lot of apples. So if I draw these, let's say if we were to draw this in a straight line, this would be a problem because now this means that x2 and x1 are indifferent but we just said that no you like x1 more which means i can i get to go from x2 to x3 but what i can't do is i can't touch x1 which means i have to avoid touching x1 even though it is on the straight line i just can't go through it so i have to bend inward slightly and that's what gives me convexity right the fact that the average of any two of these. So I can also pick another average, like it's a weighted average that is closer to x2 than x3. Now I also can't connect this in a straight line because then I mean that x2 and x4 are indifferent. But I just said it's an average of x2 and x3, you know, it's a weighted average, right? So it's still better than both x2 and x3. So I can't go through them. So I have to maybe go slightly, you know, bend inward like this, meaning any bundle is possible, any bundle is possible, this is possible, but it can't actually, you know, you, you can't put x2, x3, x4, x1 on the same bundle. That's why even though they are on a straight line and made from the same bundles, but you can't connect them because uh, people prefer these guys, people prefer x1 and x4 over x2 and x3. Yep. Um, Lastly, what we one of the takeaways from this is that indifference curves can also not cross. The reason is because it leads to a simple contradiction. Because if I have this u1, I'm saying that you are indifferent between x2 and x1 because they're on the same indifference curve. You are also indifference between x2 and x3 because they're on the same indifference curve. So what does this mean? You are indifferent between x2 and x1 you are also indifferent between x2 and x3, which means that you should be indifferent between x1 and x3, but clearly x1 is preferred to x3 because it has more, right? So it would violate the axiom of monotonicity because x1 has more of everything compared to x3. So this leads to a contradiction. And so they can never cross, indifference curves can, curves can never cross and they have to be parallel. And lastly, uh, which, which is the the, the next topic, which in, in, on our playlist is going to be the marginal rate of substitution. Uh, simply, this is the slope of the indifference curve. And, you know, we know the simple slope is rise over run, but mathematically, we're going to do more work and find out what the slope and what the MRS means. But the, as far as interpretation goes, it's simply saying how much of good Y do you have to give up to get one more unit of good X? And that is the MRS. And we will explore that in our next video. Um, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, you can leave out in comment if you want to request any video tutorial. Thank you.